It doesn't matter how much people love K-pop, there are probably songs that they find too irritating to listen to. And surprisingly, there are many others who agree with them. That's how a certain number of K-pop songs are held up on criticism. Before I start the video, you gotta check out this app, The Coots. They're holding a Back to School with NCT 127 event, where every day, you can win a NCT 127 Back to School kit, which includes over 10 items such as posters, stickers, photo cards, memo pads, and more. All you have to do is download the free app and take a poll, and each day, someone will be chosen as a winner. Do not miss out on the coups and all of their fun weekly giveaways. If you love K-pop, you need the coups. The DL link is in the description below. Now, let's start the video. The list starts with Wonderland, the debut song of Gugu Dan under the management of Jellyfish Entertainment. When the song was out, it immediately disappointed netizens, especially those on shore who raised high expectations, since the group had up to two famous Producer 101 contestants, Sejong and Mina. According to the Knet, Gugu Dan would better suit upbeat songs with strong movements, rather than what the company served them. Specifically, Wonderland was a bland song, following the so-called cuties concept, which has multiple times fed up netizens for being used by so many girl groups. Since there were inconsiderable add-in elements to the song production, nothing new and nothing satisfied the music lovers. Even their fans, who excitedly looked forward to the debut, couldn't understand why the talented girls didn't perform songs that could showcase their true capability in colors. Currently, the music video of the song on the YouTube platform merely reaches 1.1 million views, with 2.7 thousand dislikes and over 36 thousand likes, after more than four years of release. However, the music agency did give the girls some favor by investing in taking care of the MV quality with a nice setup. Moreover, the visuals of the members were fresh and eye-catching with soft makeup. Afterward, the company had taken the comments into consideration, resulting in a great success with the song A Girl Like Me in the following comeback. The next dimension is EXO with the song Mama. Though it was a massive hit that brought EXO right to the brightest stardom in the early days, this song fell for criticism due to being distinctly different from what K-pop was serving at the time. Conforming to the trendsetter behavior of SM, it's quite obvious that EXO is a group holding the greatest experimental spirit of the company. Born in the phase where Gen 2 was thriving and Gen 3 starting to rise, EXO has differentiated itself from the rest of K-pop by an attempt to create a different sound for pop. From the very beginning, EXO has already shaped their image as an alien group coming to blow a new breeze into the K-pop industry. To portray that spirit, they chose to start off with Mama, a song filled with a strange metallic noise and screaming instead of merely rapping. Though fans did welcome EXO with such a breakthrough debut, many people, especially those who were yet to be ready for new things, find the song confused and eccentric. Yet, it was not just the production part that was abstract. The lyrics of Mama was a huge minus point, causing people to wonder. Many netizens complained that the chants at the beginning of the song were nonsense. Despite how hard SM tried to make it poetically, it was just some random English words put together that were believed to be cringy to hear. Furthermore, the criticism upon the songs also partly came from ELFs. Particularly, ELFs believed SM was trying to remake another Super Junior by the formation of 12 members, which has long been the signature lineup of Suju. As a result, after their debut, EXO was called the fail version of Super Junior and didn't win any significant achievements back then. Putting all things aside, although the song failed to reach the mass public, MAMA won many critics' compliments for the song structure and the ambitious idea of introducing it to a niche market like Korea. One of the compliments was about the combination of ancient chants, operatic orchestral conventions layering with deep and heavy bass to deliver a one-of-a-kind music product. I bet with you that, until now, there hasn't been any debut song that is so sophisticately composed and praised by so many critics like Mama of EXO. The third controversial song on the list is Tilting My Head by Girls Day. Maybe in K-pop history, there hasn't been any debut song that received such a massive wave of criticism like this one. Tilting My Head was even said to top the worst K-pop debuts list and K-pop songs in general since the release day in 2010. Even one member of Girls' Day once expressed how embarrassing she felt during the song broadcasting. Though the use of autotune was to cover some minor weak vocals and weak performing capabilities, Girls' Day went overboard and set a bad assumption of using autotune as a completely annoying and cheating tool. Specifically, the over-autotuned vocal literally triggered everyone at first hearing 
it made it difficult to see the uniqueness in each member's voice. According to fans, this was, and always will be, the darkest autotune pass of Girls' Day that needed burying deep down in the corners of YouTube or any other music platforms. Not to mention the eye-itching neon themes and the overly comical fashion with their unbearable hairstyles together form terrible impressions. Up till now, Tilting My Head has only gained 177,458 views on YouTube. In fact, the video was deleted a couple of years after the first release, and then somehow being re-uploaded in 2016 to the surprise of everyone. Still, there remains one thing that may never change, the criticized attitude of the public to the song. Another not-so-popular opinion as to why this debut song received so much hate came down to the group's name. Since the name Girls' Day was so similar to the name of the legendary girl group Girls' Generation, the group was believed to intentionally replicate Girls' Generation to feed off their popularity. However, it was probably not a bad step for Girls' Day to get into the industry with an unpolished image, as having a bad impression could also capture a moderate amount of attention. Maybe Girls' Day intentionally created a bad and unprofessional image, just to work their way up and prove that they were a solid proof for the statement, start from the bottom and now we hear. Who knows, right? Next comes Signal, aka the worst song in the history of Twice, according to the public. Unlike any song discussed so far, Signal was the song that did well on chart and received many achievements after releasing. Yet, in the eyes of many people, including a minority of Onces, it was just an overrated single. Though Signal was one of many successful songs produced by the CEO of JYP, Pak Tin Yong, it still failed to meet the expectation of the public. Since many were expecting Twice to get out of those bright, cute songs formulated to do well on music charts, the release of Signal was a slap to their face. Specifically, the song was underproduced with too many high notes and usual predictable earworm parts. As of others, the song once again followed the cutesy style, so it's kinda lame. Regarding the music video, JYP once again recorded the scenes that were irrelevant to each other, creating the scattering feelings which really had to catch up on the first viewing. Some even believed that the song showed signs of Pak Chin Yong's downfall, and if it wasn't for Twice's effect, there's no way the song could go viral. However, although the digital data of Signal was not as good as Twice's earlier achievements, it's still one of her songs released within the same year. Specifically, it topped many music charts, won a majority of trophies of 2017, and helped Twice receive the noble title Song of the Year in Mama 2017. Despite the early wave of criticism, as time went by, Knets admitted that the song kept growing on their mind and they weirdly fell for it. The next name is a song that managed to cause a clearly polarized spectrum of opinions. Zimzalabim by Red Velvet. Just like their senior group EXO, Red Velvet got heavy investments from SM from the concepts, songs, to visuals. Still, Zimzalabim was regarded as a failure because of one silly mistake of SM, the over-enthusiasm to put so many elements into one music product. The balance of the song was hard to define, with the instruments misplaced here and there. Moreover, for non-professional listeners or non-critics, they perceived the song as messy and annoyingly loud with repetitive chorus and under-supported catchphrase. Besides, many argued that Zimzalabim was clearly a parallel of the production I Got a Boy, presented by SNSD, or exactly the remake of it. Another element that helped to draw lots of public attention was the visual part. On Twitter, some netizens even commented that the song sounds like how their outfits look, implying Red Velvet's clothes were nothing more than a mess. It seemed like, on a beautiful day, the Red Velvet stylist suddenly hit upon a weird fashion sense and decided to try out the fresh ideas on the girls. As a result, all members were dressed in contrasting colors, distinguished materials, and eccentric redesigns with some weird cuts. However, as a digital monster, Red Velvet not only managed to take over tons of domestic charts with Zimzalabim, but also topped the American iTunes album chart, helping them become the first ever girl group to achieve this position. Plus, the upcoming song is the one with the cringiest name ever, Banana Allergy Monkey by Oh My Girl Banhana, a subunit of Oh My Girl. This was considered a wrong move in the girls' career, especially after the impactful success of Secret Garden. Despite the catchy melody, the whole song was criticized for its cliché lyrics. For some people, this song has done nothing but to make fun of those who are allergic to certain types of food. In fact, some parents even reported Banana Allergy Monkey because they believed it was mocking their children. Besides, the song was also put under strong criticism for its confusing and repugnant choreography. 
particularly to imitate the monkey movements, the three girls pretended to scratch their bottoms, which was super graceless. Though the dancing capabilities of Oh My Girl Banhana have always been highly assessed in K-pop, the girls seem to have downgraded their talents with this song. Some k were so triggered that they even demanded Oh My Girl Banhana to get back to their original style instead of trying to become another caramel orange. Not receiving much support from the public, the song quickly left the top 100 on Korean music platforms. After three years, the Monkey Song only got around 9 million views, with the number of dislikes reaching 18,000, accounting for 13% of the amount of thumbs ups. Yet, it's worth noting that in terms of delivering a quirky and funny story to tell the audience, Oh My Girl Banhana seemed to have done quite a good job. At the end of the day, they still managed to do what they wanted, blowing a fun and eccentric breeze into an industry full of serious MVs. The last position on the list belongs to Icon, with Bling Bling. With the song, Icon was once again questioned for whether they were artists coming from YG. To further explain, since all YG artists managed to mark their very own color in the map of K-pop ever since day one, due to the average quality of Icon's song, YG lovers were disappointed. Specifically, the song was described as an old-fashioned hip-hop song, but ridiculously lacking the hip-hop elements. There were hardly any hooks to attract the listeners, let alone impress them in B.I.'s rap lines. Moreover, Bling Bling's producer seemed to have not paid attention to elaborate the melody, because when combining it with the lyrics, the whole piece just sounded really off. As Bling Bling failed to maintain a high position on the charts, falling to the 73rd position after just one day. Yet, it's worth noting that Bling Bling still fully expressed the message Icon wanted to deliver, proving their swagness, power, and wealthiness. So which song on the list do you feel shouldn't have been criticized so harshly? Feel free to comment down below to let me know. Also, don't forget to download the coups right now and make sure you enter to win the Back to School with NCT 127 event starting Monday, March 8th. The coups is always free, and you can make friends with other K-pop fans. Also, they are announcing another giveaway with prizes including albums and other live streaming events. Follow them on social media and download the app today. Thank you for watching.